Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single-family homes all the way up to 600-plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Happy Sunday. You're listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. I'm your host, Mike Harrison. And as always, we're working on your financial freedom. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you don't know who Lifestyles Unlimited is, we are an educational and mentorship group for real estate investors all over the United States. And we have several members that don't even live in the United States, yet they invest in the United States. This is our 31st year of continuous business. And we can teach you how to retire in three to five years. We're here to help investors and discuss real estate investing and you can find us at lifestylesunlimited.com. I've got a great show today with some very important information but before we get to that if you set goals like I do like it or not my friends 2021 believe it or not is one sixth over one sixth of this year is gone and I'm a math guy I would say 17 percent of the year is gone and the clock is ticking And yes, I cannot imagine a more unique start to any year at any time in my life. However, if you plan to start investing, now is the time. Do not sit on the sidelines, my friends. Do not use excuses as a crutch to not do something, to not change your life, to not create passive income, to not create true wealth. I want you to remember one thing. The number one, number one regret of all real estate investors is this. And to a person, every one of them will tell you what their number one regret is. Just ask them. And they will say, I wish I had started sooner. So my friends, one-sixth of the year is gone. Quit sitting on the sidelines. If you hadn't started, now is the time. Okay, today's show, lots of excellent information. You may want to call in. I'll throw the number out at the beginning of the, of the second segment. If you want to email me, I have my email open. That's askmike at L-U-I-N-C dot com. I'll look at those between the breaks. But I have a guest on today's show based on recent events, this massive Arctic front that took over our state for seven, eight, nine days, longer maybe in some areas. And we're going to talk about insurance with an insurance professional. Lee, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you having me. Excellent. Um, Hey, dumb question. Are you busy? Oh, just a tad bit. I mean, <laughs> fortunately, it has slowed down a little bit, but uh, the first two weeks uh, uh, the, after the storm were just insane. I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Lee, give us an idea. I, I guess first tell us a little bit about yourself and then give us an idea about just how big, how much storm damage is out there. Sure. Real quick, again, my name is Lee Siegel. I work for uh, Integrity Personal Insurance. We're a vendor with Lifestyles Unlimited. Uh, We're an independent broker out of McKinney, Texas, although we can write all throughout the state of Texas. This has been a Texas-wide storm, which, as a comparison, uh, they're they're predicting insurance losses throughout the state of about $26 billion dollars. Oh, and comparing wow. that to uh, 2017 Hurricane Harvey, which was primarily located uh, in the Houston area, that was yeah. about 20, 20 billion. So this is six billion dollars more in insurance claim damage. Um, so just imagining the scope of that type of insurance claims and the number of claims adjusters that have had to be on the ground and just the whole process to take care of the insureds who suffered major insurance damage. That's incredible. $26 billion. I, w- I would surmise that most people out there cannot imagine that this damage is greater than that of a hurricane that flooded so many people in Houston. That's, um, 
that's tremendous. Any idea on the number of claims, roughly? Yeah, they're estimating probably somewhere around 750,000 claims. Um, as of about a week ago, there were already at uh, over 300,000. So, you know, because there's there's a there's a trickle down effect of when people start filing claims. A lot of yeah. times you don't even really know about the damage until uh, some of the thawing that has taken place, and even where you get to some some of the hidden damage that people are going to start finding out down the road. Yeah, and I want to talk about that um, a little bit later in the show. But so you're talking about claims and damage, and, and then there's a lot of people like myself. I had a broken pipe, but I fixed it myself, and I'm not filing a claim. I was able to, to shut that water off immediately because I had planned a what if. So I, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there just like myself that had damage, but we're not filing claims. Well, absolutely. And then there's also the the folks that, you know, we always try and consult with our clients and make sure should you file a claim. You know, most yeah. people have a deductible. Um, it could be as low as $1,000 for water damage. It could be 1% of their dwelling value. So you want to make sure that if there is a loss, that it is well in excess of your deductible. It makes no sense if you've got a $1,000 deductible and your loss amount is $1,200 to file a claim that will be a net of $200. You know, that I'm a staunch proponent of using your insurance for catastrophic losses, which a right. lot of people have incurred this past storm, you know, with made, you've seen pictures, everybody's seen the pictures of homes with ceilings collapsed and yeah. inches of water in the home. Those are the ones that need to be filed. That's why you have insurance, but filing it because you had food spoilage, you know, that yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense. Or if you had a couple of windows that might have broken, no, those are things you take care of yourself. Use your insurance for large losses. Yeah, there was people that left their houses because the power went off and they're freezing, so they would go over to a friend or family that had power, and then they come back and find out, well, that running water's been in their house for three days or something horrible like that. So major, major damage. Well, Lee, we're going to come back after a short break. Again, if you have questions, want to ask Lee Siegel or myself, Or if you want to email us, we'll open the phone lines when we come back. My name is Mike Harrison. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Mike Harrison. We're discussing this storm damage and claim and damage mitigation based on this recent storm, this catastrophic $26 billion storm is estimated by the insurance industry. I have Lee Siegel, an insurance professional with Integrity Personal Insurance, on the show today. If you have any questions for Lee or myself, our number is 855-497-4335, 855-497-4335, or send me an email. I have my email open. I'll check it during the breaks. We'll see if we can't get your question on the show. Ask Mike at L U I N C dot com. That's L U I N C dot com. So, Lee, what actions should a homeowner or property owner be taking right now if they feel they have damage again greater than what their deductible is be- because of the storm? Well, and I think really, too, this is kind of at this point, you know, a lot of major things where people had, you know, ceilings collapsed and pipes had broken. I think by now probably have discovered a lot of those. But the main thing is, you know, anytime you find a problem, start taking care of stopping the cause, you know, whether it's turning off the water source. You know, that's one of the things going forward. Every single person, whether you had damage or not, should know how do you turn off the water source to your house. 
so that if a a pipe does break, you're able to stop that. Um, Having a having numbers of people to call water mitigation companies. Uh, I don't want to give out names. You know, you can always look for reputable ones, but you know, a company that can come in and help sop up the water, help dry it out, you know, because it's not yeah. just the floors. It can get into your walls, into the insulation. I mean, the damage can be a lot greater than what you can see. And if yeah. it's not properly taken care of, properly dried out, then mold can grow. And then mold is very limited as far as coverage on a homeowner's or a dwelling fire policy. So another reason you want to make sure that that's taken care of properly. So getting a plumber, you know, just now going forward, every single homeowner or landlord should have in their files a good plumber, a water mitigation person, knowing these things. Hopefully this was a a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence, but it may not be. And so now it should be a wake-up call to everybody to know how to take care of these things. Again, if you do need to file a claim and you know that it's in well in excess of your deductible, you can contact your agent discuss it with them. They may just put you directly in touch with the insurance company. A lot of insurance companies like claims to be filed online. That way, it's done a lot quicker than when you're calling, and then they have to assign it to a desk adjuster, then a field adjuster. It's a lot quicker doing it online. So those are the things that you should be taking care of right away. And take pictures. It's it's easy to file online. Yes, that's the quickest. I realize not everybody out there is online savvy, and it's funny that I'm saying that in the year 2021, but that is the truth. But um, online is easier. Take lots of pictures. It's funny you mentioned that tool to turn off your water. My neighbor had that tool, and I, we'd always talked about it. Hey, if I got a broken pipe or, or if you see water coming out, here's where the tool is. And so as soon as our pipe broke, it was on the back patio, actually. It wasn't inside my house, but ran over, across the street, grabbed that tool. Uh, my neighbor helped me, and we got it shut off. But I went ahead, and I got online. I purchased one of those T-bars, I guess, as you call it. And I think that's a great exercise for every property owner this afternoon. Get out there and figure out how to turn off your water. If you don't, ask a friend or ask a neighbor. And get that tool, put it in your garage, and tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your wife, your spouse, hey, here's the tool, here's how it works. But, yeah, that's a great point, Lee. Yeah, and your point, too, about pictures. Um, anytime you are documenting things with, you know, here, I did go and buy this tool, or, you know, I had a plumber come out, and here's the receipt of the work that was done. Just being able to have all that documentation to go over with a claims adjuster so that you can be properly reimbursed for what you've done already to help slow the, the the damage potential. Right. Now, documentation, let's talk about this because we're real estate investors. So I want to remind everyone out there, if this is your investment property, that is a business. So everything you spend, document your travel, your time, your fuel over there. Uh, keep every receipt, take lots of pictures. Why? Because you get to those are costs against the business. So when you do the taxes, you write those off. So hopefully everybody got that uh, that side of it. Lee, let's talk about pipes for a moment because obviously that's the major issue. Now break it down for us because I know some things are covered and some things are not covered, and it depends on whether it's a, a investment property or personal home. So can you maybe clarify that for our listeners? Sure, and you know, and again that's. The good part is damage to pipes that burst from freezing is a covered peril on a homeowner's policy, on a dwelling policy form three, the DP3 that that we talk a lot about at Lifestyles. It's not covered under a DP1 policy. Uh, So again, you know, I know for investors, sometimes you're trying to, you know, kind of minimize your costs on certain things like insurance, but... There's a point where if you had tried to save $100 or so going with a less expensive policy, a DP1, and now you find out you have no damage, no coverage for damage from water pipes breaking, 
you're going to wish you had paid that extra money because these claims can be ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. So pipe breaking are most times going to be a covered peril. So essentially, if you have a DP three, insurance will cover fixing the pipe, but they won't fix the damage as a res- oh, no, result no, of the no, water. It, no, it's actually the opposite, Mike. It's all the damage that done because the pipe broke, the water damage that will be covered. Pipes are not covered. Ah, okay, okay. So you're going to have to cut into the wall, et cetera, to get to that pipe to fix That's it. That's all that... going to be covered. Okay. Yeah, that'll, yeah, it's just the actual pipe itself. The other thing that, unfortunately, a lot of people are finding out is that damage to pools, swimming pools, that froze over is not covered by any homeowner's policy in Texas. It's interesting because we've had cold weather here at least in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, in the past. But we've never had this extended period of sub-freezing weather. I've been in the industry 28 years. To be honest, Mike, I had no idea that that was not a covered peril by by any homeowner's policy, just because the topic never came up in the past. So, unfortunately, a lot of homeowners that have swimming pools are now finding out, darn it, (laughs) I'm not not covered. covered some expensive claims and and i've got some friends that are going through that we'll be right back after a short break my name is mike harrison this is the lifestyles unlimited real estate investor radio show we're discussing insurance and damage as a result of this arctic storm here in texas with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Mike Harrison. I want to thank you for tuning in this morning. We're talking about this catastrophic Arctic storm, and I wish I had a name for it, the Great Texas Freeze. We've we've got to come up with something catchy so that uh, we can, everyone knows what we're talking about 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, because we will be talking about it. This is a, a massive storm involved in regarding to the damage involved, $26 billion, And I've got an insurance professional on the show today. And if you've got a question for Lee Siegel or myself, our number is 855-497-4335. Or send me an email, askmike at l-u-i-n-c dot com. I am checking those as we go through the the show. If I don't catch you until after the show, I will respond personally. So, Lee, before we get too lost here in the show, I I want you to throw out your contact information in case someone needs to contact you directly. Sure, appreciate that, Mike. My office phone number is 972-930-930. 7086, and my direct extension is 114. So 972-930-7086, extension 114. Or you can email me at l for Lee dot Siegel, S-I-E-G-E-L, at insureintegrity.com. Excellent. And that's Integrity Personal Insurance. I'm sure you can Google and find that. And as always... Absolutely. You're one of our more popular vendors, and you're on our vendor hub for those Lifestyles Unlimited members that are listening out there. You can go in, type in insurance. I, I clicked insurance Dallas, and uh, it popped right up. So Lee Lee was there if you need to get a hold of Lee. So, Lee, we were talking about swimming pools, and, and I don't have a pool. I've got a lot of friends that have pools, and you're on the, the group chat, right, and you're seeing everybody that's – running their pool, and then all of a sudden the power outages start hitting. I had a friend that actually took a, a sawzall, and he just literally zipped his pipes off because he knew it was going down and everything was going to freeze. He wanted to save his equipment. He knew his pipes would crack, so he just zipped them and emptied all the water out, and now all he has to do is rehook it. So he came out pretty good. That was a smart move on his part. Very smart. Yep. So, a, lot of and, people, a lot of people are not as fortunate or not as prepared for that. Right, and and I had no idea that pool equipment wasn't covered, and I don't know what pool equipment is, but I bet it's ten grand, huh? Something like that, maybe. Possibly, that's one of those things too for people that 
do have pools or are going to be putting pools in. I know a lot of pool manufacturers offer warranties for those, so that's always an option to look at going forward, especially if you do have to replace some equipment that was damaged. Check with the uh, pool manufacturer and see if they offer a warranty since we've all determined now that homeowner's insurance does not cover damage to a pool from freezing. Okay. Now, I, I do want to also throw this out. We advise investors, real estate investors, do not purchase rental property, investment property, with a pool. A pool is a no, no, and no, and there's 17 reasons why, and feel free to reach out to me if, if you want to discuss. Now, are there people who have rental properties with pools? Yes. I just I feel that the risk is is too great for the reward. So, and the fact that Lee just threw out, heck, you can't even cover it on insurance. Lee, can you, is there even a rider or something like that that would cover it? Or is it just a flat out, no thank you from the insurance industry? It's just a flat out, no thank you. I mean, it's in every single homeowner's insurance policy form that says that that's a specific exclusion to damage the pools from freezing. Right. And pools are dangerous. Actually, Oh, what's the economic book? I love it. They do a case study on what's more dangerous, a loaded gun in the house or a swimming pool in the backyard. And a swimming pool in the backyard is much more dangerous when you look at the math compared to people who have guns in in their house as, as far as terrible accidents happening. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. We don't invest in properties that have swimming pools. Lee, I want to come back to this. We touched on it. What is the time frame to file a claim? That's always confusing, and there is going to be a lot of damage that's undiscovered. Some of these pipes are compromised, and they're leaking right now, but they're not broken. And and so this damage may not be discovered for, for some time. Most companies will let you uh, file a claim within about a year of discovering of the loss. So, you know, it is one of those things where there's there's a decent time frame. I always encourage people to... You can file that right away. You don't necessarily have to have all the work done right away. This topic is on the winter storm, but like with roofs, you know, there was just a recently a hailstorm in McKinney the other night. Thursday, to add insult to injury, we come out of this freeze and we get a hailstorm. It hit here in Keller, too. Okay. So does it make sense right now to get a new roof put on, knowing that we're just getting into the hail season? Probably not, but at least getting that claim filed so that there is a date of loss on the books of when this occurred. So generally, as soon as you, especially because we're we're talking about water damage, though, from this this storm, those are things that, again, you want to get that process started right away as soon as you discover the problem because, as we discussed, you don't want hidden damage to show up down the road that may very well be excluded from your policy, like mold damage. Right. I can guarantee that there's a lot of flat roofs out there that took a beating and people just don't know it yet. Some some of the older ones, you get that freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw, which is we had the sun shining on those flat roofs, and so underneath that snow and ice, it's liquid, and then at night the temperatures drop again, and that I'm sure it was popping seams and any sort of penetration on that roof may have had damage, but that's probably not noticed yet for a lot of people. Exactly. Let's change gears. We require our residents to carry rental insurance. What does that cover, Lee? Does it cover hotels if they had to go stay in in a hotel or anything like that? Or can you go through that a little bit? Sure. And again, that's why if you're a landlord, you absolutely must require your tenants to have renter's insurance. couple reasons. Number one, for liability purposes. You know, Mike, you talked about swimming pools. Well, that's that's one of the biggest risks is a pool. But, you know, let's say somebody gets injured on that property. We want to make sure that the renter's insurance covers the liability first. Now, they may still come after the landlord, but you want to make sure that their renter's insurance, the liability is protected. Uh, you can't move into an apartment almost anywhere in the DFW area where they don't require you to have renter's insurance. And primarily that's from the liability standpoint, but also, too, you know, if you're a landlord and you had a big water pipe broke that damaged some of your tenants' furniture, clothing, 
whatever of their personal belongings. Yeah. That's not your responsibility as a landlord. That's why they need renter's insurance to cover their personal property as well. Yeah. I have a friend that had all new, had just moved into a condo, all new furniture, new bedroom set, everything, broken pipe in the ceiling above from the unit above and, and all that's destroyed. This individual had renter's insurance, thankfully, but that's what it's for. And you, you mentioned about the loss. So there's a part of a renter's policy called loss of use, because if they've lost the use of that living in that property because of a covered loss, then they can go stay at a hotel at a another place. Any temporary living expenses they would incur because they've lost the use of that premises would be covered. Unfortunately, if it was just because of power outage, that's not a covered peril. So while it's terrible to say, I'm sorry, your power's off and you're freezing, insurance isn't going to cover them going to a hotel because of that. It has to be a covered peril. But the case of the broken pipe knocking the ceiling out and everything coming down, that one would Absolutely. be covered for Absolutely. excellent. Okay, we're going to pick this up after a short break. My name is Mike Harrison. We're talking insurance best practices with Lee Siegel, Integrity Personal Insurance. This is the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. I want to thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike Harrison. We're talking about this catastrophic storm with Lee Siegel and, and the damage. The amount of loss out there is higher than, than I ever imagined. It's greater than Hurricane Harvey as it stands now. Lee, let's go ahead and let's talk about maybe loss of rent a little bit here in this last segment. How, when is that covered? How is it covered? Let's talk about that a little bit. Sure, and I've had a lot of uh, Lifestyles members that, yeah, unfortunately, they had some rather large water damage to their rental property to the point where the their tenants did have to move out. And that's exactly why that coverage is in place, because now that property is uninhabitable due to a covered peril. So in addition to having the water damage and any other damage covered by the insurance, they will also get, the landlord will also get reimbursed for loss of rent. So basically, if they were charging $2,000 a month for rent and the property was not going to be uh, able to have a tenant in there for a month while everything was being repaired, then the insurance would reimburse them $2,000 as part of the claims. You know, that's why you do have that in there. Now, does the landlord have to reimburse the rent to the tenant? I don't know about that part of it. That's kind of outside of my scope. I would think that they would want to, you know, yeah. work with the tenant to say, hey, I understand you haven't been able to live here for a month, so, you know, we're going to reimburse you back for that. Now, the tenant does have, again, having renter's insurance, they should have some loss of use on their renter's policy, like we discussed in the previous segment. So at least some of their expenses would be covered if they have to go stay in a hotel, rent another place, stay with friends, whatever it took, because they can't stay in that property uh, for a period of time. It's it's worth the discussion with the resident because, again, best best property, best price doesn't just mean materialistic property. It means management. It means relationship with the resident. Again, we're looking for that long-term resident. We want that resident to want to live in our property, want to stay in our property, love our property, enjoy our property, raise their families, etc. So that's that's absolutely worth a, a conversation. To You want to keep your resident happy as much as possible. Okay? Some people are difficult, some some not so much, but it's, it's worth the discussion. <laughs> Lee, we touched on this earlier in the show, but 
again, if, if someone hadn't listened through the whole thing, if a pipe breaks, okay, I, I know the homeowners, are, they're wanting to, to get started right away, and a lot of times it might take two, three weeks or longer, as big as this storm is, for an adjuster to get out there. What can they do about cleaning up and, and starting that process? Because you you're not going to sit around your house with, with insulation on the ground or your property, your rental property. You want to start getting it cleaned up right away. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in any claims adjuster will you know, will approve that as far as, again, making sure you've taken photos, that you've documented everything that you've done to mitigate the loss, to help slow the spread of the loss, you know, whether it's getting mops, you know, people just going to the Home Depot and buying mops to sop up some of the water, you know, getting a water mitigation company in to bring in those big, gigantic fans to help yeah. start drying things out. Just any expenses because you don't want to leave everything just sitting there unrepaired. The the claims adjusters, they understand that this is such a massive loss. They're going to approve those things. But again, it's not going to be a matter of, well, you know, we had um, we had vinyl flooring. Let's go ahead and upgrade it and put in some Mexican tile. You know, that's yes, not the type not? of thing that, <laughs> that it's going to be approved. <laughs> it's replacement cost. It's not, you know, upgrading your property. Using yeah. this as a chance to upgrade your property. So, but again, making sure you're taking care of getting the the property repaired and back to the point where it can start being utilized again. So take pictures, save your receipts, and, and again, any expense utilized here, you can write it off. Can they charge for their time? Is that possible if, let's say, the, the homeowner wants to do the work themselves, the cleanup? I would probably, again, when you make that initial call with an adjuster, you're going to be talking to a desk adjuster, not somebody that's going to be coming out in the field. They would be the one that would authorize that or not authorize that. Okay. Most of the times, too, like you took care of your own pipe, if you are qualified to do some of those things, absolutely save some of that cost. You can actually work up a, uh, an invoice for yourself, basically. But that is something you want to have that conversation with the desk adjuster. Fair enough. That makes sense. Just document, copy, picture, everything you probably can. Lee, you and I both know this. I've lived in Texas pretty much my entire life, born in Texas. There are weather extremes in this state. I mean, for instance, the last week we went from minus three to 75 degrees and had a hailstorm on top of it. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see regarding investors purchasing insurance for rental properties? A a great question, Mike, because I know when you're putting your numbers together and you're looking at, you know, here are my costs. Here's the cost of my mortgage. Here's the cost of my property taxes, my insurance. What am I going to be able to charge in rent? And One of the true variables is the insurance cost because you can't necessarily change the property taxes. And, you know, unless you refinance, you probably can't change your your mortgage amount. But if anything this storm taught us is don't go cheap on insurance. You don't want to be insurance poor, but don't go cheap. You know, in in Texas, we have the dwelling policy form one and form three, DP1, DP3. DP1 is a basic actual cash value policy that basically only covers hail and fire. That's essentially it. No water damage, actual cash value, nothing replacement cost. So Mm, why would you get that type of policy just to be able to say, oh, yeah, I've got insurance on this property? You're really not properly protected in that case. So why not spend a little bit more and get a DP3 policy? Use an agent that can shop it, that can look at different companies that ha- can find you the best policy at the lowest price because there are so many companies out there that pricing, like with homeowners insurance, is going to differ across the board. So, you know, making sure it's got things like loss of rent on the policy, making sure it's got good liability coverage, that it's covering all the main perils that are going to be covered by a DP3 and making sure it's replacement cost. You know, you can look at, you know, even having most every uh, landlord policy is going to require 1% uh, deductible for windstorm and hail. Yeah. But your but your all other peril like water damage, fire, theft, 
a lot of times you can get a thousand dollar deductible there, and there's not a huge difference between one percent and a thousand. So looking at that, so when you do have this water pipe break. You're not out as much as if you had a, uh, a windstorm or a hailstorm where you needed to have a larger deductible out of pocket. Yeah, hailstorms are common in Dallas Fort Worth. So, everyone I talk to, I say make sure that deductible, at least for the roof, is 1%. You don't want to go greater because when you start getting into, I mean, we can just do the math. You have a, let's say, a two hundred thousand dollar house, and you have a two percent deductible. It might only be a, a fourteen, fifteen hundred square foot one story low pitch. That roof is a five or six thousand dollar roof, and and immediately you'll be out four thousand dollars if you have a two percent deductible. And so you're coming out of pocket pretty heavy to get that roof fixed. Just not a good idea. An ACV policy. What a disaster. Actual cash value, 20, 25-year-old roof, you're going to be paying for the whole thing as an owner. And nothing's going to be a replacement cost. So, you know, if you have older flooring or older cabinets or older fixtures in the house, those are all going to be replaced at a depreciated value. So, again, you're not doing yourself any favors by going with a cheap DP1 policy Always go DP3, always go replacement cost. Be smart, be effective. People that are wanting to save 100 or $150 to risk spending four, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to fix their property makes absolutely no sense. Lee, I want to thank you for coming on the show today, uh, sharing your expertise, sharing your time. We really, really appreciate it. For those of you out there listening, is there any question that Lifestyles Unlimited investors are the most effective in the country. We have the very best vendors. We have the best advisors. We've got people like Lee coming on the show and and sharing his expertise. So, Lee, thanks again. For those of you out there, I want you to remember, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. Make it a great day. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.